Hey beekeepers, just a quick comment here on an unusual topic for Kim and me to talk about. I mean, as much as we work, as much as we love and care and are concerned for our bees, can there ever be a time that you could imagine me killing this colony? Me, the beekeeper, the, the doctor, the physician, the concerned reader, the person who does everything he can to control varroa and small high beetles, that at some point there's some reason why I should come out and destroy this colony? Thank heavens, it's not common. But it's ironic, isn't it, that no one is better suited to destroy bees than the very people who keep bees. We have the equipment, we have the know-how, we have the understanding, we know how to recover from it. We recognize the reasons for destruction. What would be some of those reasons? First and foremost, American fowl brood in many states requires colony destruction because the equipment is contaminated, the bees are contaminated, and the stuff spreads to other susceptible colonies. What if you've got a semi-rig loaded full of bees and you wreck on an interstate and you've got traffic lanes blocked and there's bees everywhere and there's injured people, that's a, not a great time to try to salvage those bees. What if you're uh, in, in the situation that I was in, in this very yard, in this very location, that I had a, a hive that was just extraordinarily hostile. They stung my neighbor just behind the fence right there as he mowed his grass. And I know that many of you would say, well, why didn't you requeen it? You have to think about the procedure, beekeepers. When you requeen that colony, you open it, you've got bees flying, they're angry, they're attacking everything in sight. Even if you find the queen and get her out of there and introduce a new queen, what's it going to take? About three to four weeks before all of that progeny is gone and all of that time they're attacking my neighbor when he mows his lawn. So I didn't kill that colony, but I had to move it. Other people though in similar situations have killed the colony. So we have to do that at times. It's a dirty job and you never feel good about it at night when you're dozing off. But you had a good productive day today killing bees. So sometimes it just has to be done. The procedure is actually simple. About a cup of any common dishwashing detergent per gallon of water wets the bees. They actually drown. It's pretty disgusting, but they drowned. Be kind of prepared. This is a small colony, kind of weak. If it had been stronger, it would have had more of an attitude about this. They don't die immediately. Any of the bees that were left flying, we had to go back and take care of those later. The reasons that uh, we have to kill bees occasionally are shown here. The colony we just took out had American fowl brood. Okay, beekeepers, after everything that I've said here in the video, after everything Kim and I said in the podcast, it's critical that you know this. There are no other options left when the decision is made to take out a bee colony. Indeed, to take out really almost any pollinator type situation, wasps, bumblebees, whatever. Our thoughts are though for honeybees. So this is not to be taken lightly. This is not done whimsically. Uh, we have tried to show that there are some specific examples when this has to be done. But it's never happy. It's never a pleasant situation. It's never something eagerly done. But there it is. On occasion, bees are simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. And more often than not, they're conflicted with the public and they have to go. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to the podcast. We look forward to talking with you again. Goodbye.